everybody, John here, and welcome to another episode where we talk about HDR. Um, I guess uh, the first uh, news is, uh, well, I'm still waiting uh, for the shops here to get the speed editor in so I can uh, pick up uh, DaVinci Resolve 17. Um, I don't think I'll really be using the speed editor much because I think it's mostly uh, for using the cut page, and I don't use that page at all. But uh, I guess it'd be foolish to pass up on it since it's free when you get the DaVinci Resolve 17. So uh, I think uh, I have to wait uh, another week or two. And then uh, once I start using DaVinci and uh, understand how to use that, um, of course, I'll be publishing another workflow, um, how to uh, do HDR and upload to YouTube using uh, DaVinci Resolve, just like I did with Final Cut Pro a few weeks ago. Um, the other thing that's going on is I'm still trying to decide on what to do about calibrating my LG OLED television set. Um, Kalman Portrait Displays, uh, let me say that again, Kalman Portrait Displays has a, a s software online. It's $145, so it's fairly reasonably priced where you can calibrate your own television, but um, the only catch is that it's only compatible with uh, Windows. And I have MacBook, uh, so it's not compatible with the Apple, uh, the Mac uh, operating system. So I still haven't uh, figured out what I'm going to do about that. Um, now, in my last video, I talked about uh, smartphones and tablets and how watching HDR content on them was a pretty horrible experience. And I don't know if I explained it clearly enough, but it was nearly impossible for me to see the picture in daylight or even in a dimly lit uh, cafe. And I was cons very concerned because I was thinking that maybe um, people watching HDR content on cell phones in their offices or in their homes um, is probably several years off if the devices aren't bright enough in order to see a picture um, so that they have to be in a completely darkened room. But uh, it turns out I was mistaken. I believe that uh, if you go into settings and change some things on the Samsung phones or on the Apple phones, uh, they can be made to have a brighter picture. And uh, so today I ended up getting an iPhone Pro, I'm sorry, an iPhone 12 Pro Max, and the HDR image on it is spectacular. And I'm gonna be using it as like a consumer reference display. So I'll be grading uh, using my LG OLED television set, but I'll be uh, checking the grade on the phone so I can get an idea of how it looks to most people watching in their homes or in offices on a smartphone device. And it's already helped me a lot because even with this video, um, I used it for the B-roll and I think it's gonna be a really useful tool to have. Um, uh, other good news is that um, when you, if you w are watching my content on, uh, on a an, an, uh, MacBook Pro or an Apple device, like a, um, an Apple iPhone or something like that, and you don't have HDR, um, you can watch my content in Safari and the image looks uh, very, very good. Um, the color is uh, pretty correct. I, I don't recommend watching it in Google Chrome or any other uh, app, but uh, it looks very good in, uh, uh, in Safari, so I can uh, recommend that to people who can't watch my content uh, on an HDR device. Although, of course, um, it's gonna look a lot better in HDR. Um, so anyway, that's it, uh, the iPhone, uh, uh, 12 Pro is uh, Max is amazing. Um, I can use it to check uh, the color that I grade on my LG OLED to make sure it looks good. Um, oh, okay, uh, things I'm doing differently that might be of help to you if you're doing uh, your own HDR content um, is um, Gerald Undone in a video of his a uh, little while ago, he talked about how you can change the picture profile setting uh, in S-Log uh, 3 to color phase plus 2 in order to get rid of the green tint uh, that you get with the Sony a7S 3 
and I've been using that uh, trick in order to get rid of the green tint, but uh, it doesn't work 100%. Uh, what I found is when I'm doing HDR content that I have to um, also go into the color wheels in Final Cut Pro and change the hue to uh, plus three degrees, I guess it's plus three or something like that in order to get rid of the green. Um, but when I take my, if I go ahead and copy a clip from my project and begin a new project in Rec. 709 in order to make a thumbnail for my videos that I upload to YouTube, um, I find that I have to remove the three uh, hue shift that I put in there. So I'm thinking uh, the color phase trick in the camera works perfectly for Rec. 709 content, but I'm thinking that for HDR content, it might be necessary to change color phase to plus three or plus four in order to get rid of the green uh, cast. So I'm going to try that uh, probably tomorrow and uh, I'll let you know if that works. And uh, the last bit of news is uh, after years of resistance, I'm finally adding uh, uh, film grain to my uh, videos. Uh, you, I don't know if you noticed it or not, but um, it does add a special look to the videos and I really like it a lot and I probably will continue doing that uh, from here on out. Anyway, um, I'm going to sign off now. Uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.